we are a digital community focused on um, bringing pe uh, people to um, learn and to improve themselves in the area of data science uh, through various um, various of uh, events like these meetups uh, for uh, which we have gathered today uh, also through nerd obsessions how many of you have heard about nerd obsessions two three okay uh, not that bad. <laughs> I will tell you a little bit more about that. Also through data science hackathons, uh, one of the teams uh, who we will present today is uh, was taking part in the Datathon. Uh, and also various of, uh, other events focused on data science and machine learning. And um, I'm so happy to see you today and also the people who may be probably watching afterwards. Uh, the, the meetup and the presentations. And also, uh, what I wanted to, to tell you was that we really are thankful to our sponsors uh, from Telelink and World Quant because they are supporting us not only as a community, but also uh, supporting us with cases for the data tones and also for um, with uh, industry experts for sharing knowledge and experience. And um, the link, you know, is a digital transformation company and WorldQuant is one of the biggest companies for hedge funds. So uh, we are really thankful to them. And you see mm, some statistics, more than 2,050 uh, people, uh, 500,000 people on our platform, many, many events and many more to come. So uh, yeah, uh, I don't know also if you have heard that uh, we are organizing next month um, um, for uh, an initiative which is focused on data, uh, data with kids, data science for children. So this is a data kids uh, initiative uh, which is uh, happening on 16th on, uh, of uh, June. And if you have uh, nephews and uh, also uh, daughters and sons, you can roll them on the data science kits. Uh, and the nerd obsessions, the nerd obsessions are cold coding sessions where people ha uh, are gathering to call together, to learn together on their own uh, pace without uh, some kind of structure or something like a uh, pressure. And uh, people are gathering on these nerd uh, cold coding sessions to learn together by going through some projects they have picked to work on. And by the way, Vesco is an example. Vesco is working actually on uh, data visualization. There are uh, other teams and other people who are working on robotics, like uh, autonomous robots, and also on data visualization, but in other, uh, with other techniques. And uh, this is happening every Wednesday in Sofia WAP, our partners from Sofia Development Associ Association. So you can join every Wednesday at uh, 7 p.m. at this nerd up, se uh, nerd up coding sessions and bring your laptop and bring your passion and just join. <laughs> um, and yeah, I've told you already about data science kits. Um, and um, something maybe I am. Um, I'm missing here is a conference that is happening uh, that is happening next month in Berlin, and the world's largest develop, uh, developers congress is uh, one of the biggest congresses happening in Europe. It gathers more than more than uh, seven seven thousand yeah people, seven thousand developers. And what is really cool about this uh, congress is that they uh, gave us to our community, to our data science society community, a uh, code for discount. So if someone of you wants to join the world's largest developers, developers congress, you can uh, use this code and get 25% discount, which is very cool, I think. And probably I'm missing something more, but however, I, want, I don't want to bore you even more, uh, probably. So um, I want to tell you that today we are focused on students from 2S at our meetup. Uh, which is machine learning by students, AI hackathon solutions. Uh, two teams will be presenting presenting today their solutions from two hackathons. One was um, 
two months ago, it was focused on Vision for Sofia, with a case that was with uh, various uh, sources of data for analyzing how we can make uh, our city Sofia better uh, with much sources of data when they are combined and processed and how uh, what kind of applications can um, can be brought out of this data. Uh, our team is a little bit uh, late, but <laughs> they will join us. And the second uh, team, which is on the first line, uh, is tent, uh, uh, tent creator, right? 11th, sorry. <laughs> uh, you're young. <laughs> um, and yeah, 11th grader from 2S, uh, and uh, they were developing an, um, a model using image recognition applications, uh, and they would they will tell you more and show you also uh, some part of their code, uh, of their solutions of cow air map case, which was focused on identifying objects using different uh, libraries and algorithms. But uh, about this, uh, they will tell, tell you just in a couple of minutes. And what I want to uh, encourage you is to follow our uh, Data Science Society LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, whatever you want, Instagram, yeah, and um, subscribe uh, subscribe to our website if you haven't already. And what is very important is to follow our events, which are on our website slash events. And for this meetup, it's very important to be interactive with those who are presenting and we are really happy that they are students and they are really impressive. Um, they have um, done really impressive work uh, for this age and not only for this age but mm, yeah, uh, in general. And if you want to ask them uh, any kind of questions about their solution, you can go to Slido, uh, Slido yeah, and use this uh, hashtag uh, for entering the our uh, questions room and uh, ask your questions in there. Did you remember it? <laughs> Probably, yeah, I hope so. Um, and yeah, I want to welcome our team Nishki who won a special award of our Dataton 2019, so applause them. <laughs>
Okay, so hello, we are the team Nishki, I'm Evgeny, this is Kalim, this is Neti and this is Kostadim, and we've solved the Carphone term map case from the date 10, 2019. So what was the case? It was provided by Kaufund and basically uh, they are planning to have a drone uh, which flies around in the retail stores with cameras uh, taking pictures of all the shelves and our task was uh, to use the pictures provided by the cameras to identify any misplaced items or any uh, missing items. So that's what we did. Uh, the data for this case was provided by Kaufland and it was uh, a lot of images labeled. Uh, here is an example. The data was split into two categories. The first was the ground truth category and we've got an example from that data set right here. It's just an image where everything is right. And we've got an XML, which is the annotations of the image. And as highlighted, the most important parts are the coordinates and actually the product number. So the next slide is the working data set, where there is an example of a missing item. It's labeled with underscore M for missing in the labels. And let's say, for example, some item is uh, unrecognizable, uh, as highlighted the can, which is uh, slightly pushed, and you can't really distinguish if it's a can of whatever. So it's tagged as difficult. And that's basically the data set. Sometimes there are wrong uh, misplaced items, as we can see here. Uh, uh, the label you can see, it's shock of flakes while above the label you could see it's fruit flakes so that's a misplaced item and in the data set it's labeled with underscore w as highlighted so that was the data how we prepared it firstly we all every time there is a misplaced object there was a label that it's missing so we removed it because it's like junk data it's just confusing. Uh, secondly, all the wrong uh, or wrongly labeled items we just classify as items. That's because we use uh, we the first task is just to identify items. And the third group is the third step is to discard the difficult items because again they're like confusing. You can't really distinguish anything. And uh, we also just resize the images so that their small size and training goes faster. How we used all the data and what we did with it, we first built a model to detect all the objects, meaning all the labels and every product. Then we used, when we have all the labels, we have a uh, OCR to extract the product number from the text on the label. And finally, we wrote an algorithm to uh, detect whether there are any misplacements or anything is missing. So this is the first step, detecting actually the objects and the labels. And this is an image we get as a result from our uh, model when we ran it, when it was fully trained. How we did it, we used the YOLO algorithm, you only look once. Now I'm going to explain how it, briefly how it works. Uh, this is an example image taken from some website. It's an image of a kit, a bicycle and a monitor and uh, the task is to detect these objects. The first step of the YOLO algorithm is to split the image into different sections. For each section, meaning for each of these 13 by 13 squares, uh, we take different aspect ratio boundary boxes and we make predictions for those boundary boxes, meaning uh, where within this bounding box the object is, what's the width, the height, 
the confidence of there being anything in this object and for each class how confident uh, the model is. Then the boxes which have like low confidence are removed and uh, finally we have overlapping actually classified objects. We use non-marked separation and intersection over union to discard them. So, as the, this is the result of after applying everything, and thus the algorithm we used uh, to identify the objects. The next step is when we have identified objects and we have identified labels with OCR or optical character recognition to extract the product number from each label. Uh, it's a standard problem. Uh, which has a lot of solutions online. We used a solution by Microsoft in Azure and to write some uh, sample code and when we run, for example, this image, we can see that it actually extracted the right number. And for identifying the issue, we resorted to good old simple algorithms, uh, which we will demonstrate in a bit. We first, uh, after we have identified all the products and extracted all the product numbers, we group everything uh, depending on its coordinates. We group all the, firstly we group the labels into groups, uh, meaning every group is a row. Then we map every object to its respected uh, row. Then we check uh, if, then we form kind of uh, subgroups of all the objects. There probably should be images around here, but it was too late when we, was ma when we were making the presentation. We group all the objects into their subgroups, and we check if there are only unique subgroups, meaning if there are two groups of, let's say, potato chips, and in between them there is a group of cans, there's, there's obviously something misplaced, meaning there's a can in the middle of the potato chips which is subtracting them into subgroups and that's how we are detecting uh, misplaced items. We're also taking into consideration where the label is in regards to the group of objects. Then we check if there is actually, when we check, after we check for everything if it's correctly placed, if it passes that test, we check if there is an object for every label and some other uh, filtering we do is, for example, if on an image, we've got uh, another top row, but uh, there are only the labels, nothing on the row. You actually can't tell if there's an object or not over there because the image doesn't reach. So we're just discarding those. And after all of that is coded, we run the our solution on the test date set and got a really respectable score. So that that's pretty much it. If anybody has some questions, if not, we can do a quick demo. Okay. So first, So for the demo, we've picked two images. This is one just image of a shelf where everything is all right. And this is an image where there's actually a problem. You can see right here, uh, I mean, I hope you can see. This is uh, in a pitka soya sorevo urizovo, which means soy rice. And here is the soy rice. And here are some other soy drinks and like clearly there's a mistake so that's the image where there's something wrong and here's the image when where everything is correct like i'm everything is all right 
so the first step, as we said, uh, running the image recognition, we, as we said, use uh, the dark flow library, which implements that. This is the command we enter in order to flow the images. Any second, my laptop is slow. Any second. So here are the actual images, and the algorithm uh, succeeded in identifying every product with its number. So when this comment is run, you could simply put dash dash JSON uh, in order to produce the JSON files, which we then went to our other code, actually uh, doing the all the checks. So let's, for example, take this one, which is the correct one, which is the correct one. Copy a spot. Asla Copy a spot, I see. Okay, well, this is the desktop call one dark for three. Dark for three, demo out. This is the file. Okay. This is uh, the first part of an image, which is actually the correct, where there is no problems. And when we run the code, it actually tells us everything is fine. If we comment that and plug in the second code, uh, I mean the second part, it tells us something is wrong, and that's like the correct output we were expecting. So, yeah. So the first question is, uh, what framework did you use and how? Yeah, I will show them. Uh, so yeah, uh, what framework did you use and how? Uh, well, for the YOLO implementation, we used Dark Flow. It's uh, the YOLO implementation is origin was originally written in C in a dark net library, but we used the dark flow, which is a Python library, which is uh, written on top of TensorFlow. Uh, and for those, yeah, we used uh, Microsoft uh, Azure Cognitive Services. And how did you distinguish between missing item and wrong item? Okay, well, a miss, we don't really identify missing items. We identify just items and then apply our uh, algorithms to uh, check if there is something misplaced and we identify a missing item by there being a label but no detected item for that label. You can go on. 
what was the OCR accuracy? We haven't really measured the OCR accuracy, but what we've done is if the OCR fails to identify or extract the product number from the image, we just uh, discard that label, which uh, actually uh, worsens the accuracy of our other overall model, but it's a uh, fairly good OCR model, so most of the images which actually can be identified by a human can 100% be identified by it. But we don't know the exact measurements. Well, the labels are very small, but we actually use, when predicting, we use the full resolution images. And uh, on the full resolution, when we get the coordinates, we get the full resolution uh, image, in which is really high resolution. And we then put forward just the cut image, as, w as we had, no, I can't actually show you. As we had in the presentation, we actually cut the label from the actual image and then output it to the OCR. Did that answer the question? Okay. What did you do about those cut-off object at the edges of the images? So we just discard them. Uh, actually, if it's if it's a label, the well, yeah. If for regarding the labels, if a label is cut off you wouldn't actually be able to get the number, so that discards it. And by the objects which are actually on the edges, we just discard them, because they can't really fit into any of the row groups. <sighs> Did you know about the algorithms you used beforehand during the hackathon? About the yo, we didn't know beforehand, and it was just all on spot. So, yeah. How do you differentiate between the barcode number and the price when extracting the data? The data from labels? Well, they are different length. The product number is always a fixed length, and the barcode is also always a fixed length, and they are different lengths, so that was fairly easy. Was it possible to combine? Yeah, of course. I mean, you. Well, you don't really need to combine them into one complete program because first you run the Python code which just identifies the objects and then you run the C-sharp code to uh, identify issues, but you could always call one code from another. Like That's not, not a big deal. We, we could have done everything in Python, but we just like C-sharp and that's why. <laughs> Uh, we had an idea of incorporating everything into one app and then having mobile apps for each Kaufland employee. And when the drone is flying, if it detects, if it detects that there is a problem, uh, send its coordinates over to every uh, employee to its phone. So that's like some more when the, the solution is actually implemented and in use, that's what we would do. Any other questions? What? They're not using our solution, no. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, we saw as a 
we saw um, from our previous experience uh, with Calfon that they are interested by providing cases to uh, see what kind of approaches could be used and uh, what kind of solutions there would be. Would be, and from the previous experience, yeah, they implemented the solution. Probably now they will do this again because what is the point to have uh, interesting cases without the development and deployment afterwards? So yeah. So thank you, <laughs> Tim Nishki. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and now we want to present you one more team from Toys. But before uh, that, really thank you to all of these uh, people, uh, students from Toys, uh, from. Team Nishki, who did a great job with the Kaufman solution. By the way, all of the code is shared uh, on our our platform in the learn section, so you can check it, uh, see the code, see the what libraries they used, uh, and also try to uh, follow their steps and actually see what of uh, what kind of results uh, you achieve. And now I want to invite here um, Team Pepper, uh, who will present their paper analysis uh, application, which was uh, implemented to uh, quickly and easily um, anal uh, an for quick and uh, easy, yeah. <laughs> poo, poo, poo. yeah, Martin. <laughs> quick analysis of the neighborhoods in Sofia, uh, and yeah, come and see if your HDMI or VGA port is working uh, right and correct. And they were participating in the, vi uh, in the vis vision for Sofia Hackathon. And uh, they developed a solution which reached the finals and actually uh, won an award. OK, we have a Mac. OK. <laughs> what do you We basically need just an HDMI. Uh, okay, you have the HDMI right here. Just a second, it's here. All right, uh, fine. Okay, uh, but uh, it, we can run the presentation and someone of you would yeah. open the demo. Is it okay for you? Yeah. We'll, we'll do all the more questions. Okay. Yeah, we have a presentation. Okay, great. Okay, we are good. Okay, so hello everybody. Uh, we are the second group of students from TWEST, uh, which is Technological School Electronic Systems associated with the Technological University of Sofia. And that is me, Kaluyan. Uh, these are 
Peter, Martin, and Telerik. We are students from the 12th grade. And this is Victor, who is a student from the 10th grade. And today we are going to present to you our project, Pepper Analysis, with which uh, we won the second place in the Vision of Sofia Hackathon, which was held in December the last year. So uh, what is the problem we wanted to have a solution for? So if I am a tourist and I come to Sofia, and I don't know where I should go. I mean, I want something, but I don't, want, I don't know where to find it. Maybe I will ask some local people, but they will, probably they will uh, be difficult for me to uh, communicate with them. So uh, we created a web application, uh, which is like a map, and it has a search bar in which you're uh, going to type the thing you want uh, to find. For example, if I want to find a quiet and uh, green place in Sofia, and I click the Submit button, the map, um, it is a heat map, and it's going to show me uh, all the neighborhoods in Sofia and quarters uh, based on three colors, green, yellow, and red, respectively, for the most greener and quiet place. Uh, we have a very user-friendly interface. And uh, we also, uh, with the map, we have, uh, we can show the population density. For example, in which neighborhoods, how many people live there. And uh, sport facilities, where, uh, where the most, uh, we, where we can find the most uh, sport facilities in Sofia. And as I said, the best quarters to live. For example, for me, if I'm the tourist, and uh, I'm looking for something that I want to go. So now, Victor, we're going to talk about Sure, like how we implemented it, like for a programming language, uh, for the data analysis stuff, we use Python. Uh, for the web application, we used uh, JavaScript. And specifically on the Python side, the libraries we've made use of are NOTK, which is a natural language toolkit. It's a really powerful library made for Python, NumPy, like uh, I'm probably you're, some of you are familiar with this library, then Selenium for web scraping, uh, then Glow, which is a really cool thing. Uh, we will later mention it. And uh, basically, this uh, just a quick uh, mention about it. It's a uh, machine learning model. Uh, that is tra uh, trained by Stanford NLP group, and it's really powerful at embedding words, and you'll later see what uh, embedding words actually means. Uh, then we use Gensim, uh, again, for a like, couple of algorithms uh, that we could use uh, during the hackathon, because we had two days, and we wanted to make use of like readily implemented um, algorithms that we can just uh, turn into our code. Then Pandas, and also TextBlock, which is another library that uh, gives us uh, several capabilities in the natural language processing uh, site. Uh, so uh, for the data simulation, we use the, the uh, not only the data provided by the hackathon itself, but we used uh, some scrapping algorithms to uh, get the reviews and uh, the ratings for various hostels in Sofia. Uh, we used the API of Airbnb, uh, and we got banned, by the way, by them. So that's very unfortunate, but at the time being, he, he did a great job. Uh, we also tried, after the ban, to scrap uh, TripAdvisor. And so that's the data that we're using for, you know, to test our models and train it. Uh, also, the, the, the polygons on the heat map, uh, we have that, the, the data set is provided by the, by the Sofia. Uh, it was provided by the hackathon, by the Sofia government. Yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, it, it just was like, it, it was a, a, a map, map data like where the bounding boxes uh, are with their longitudes and longitudes, and we use that to determine where some places and when to highlight something. Uh, all right, so that's yeah. Um, 
So once we have collected the data and what the data actually uh, represents, what, what is the collected data? Well, the collected data, we have the location of a certain uh, apartment, for example, from Airbnb, its location, uh, latitudes and longitudes coordinates. And also we have all the reviews, all the reviews that have been written about this specific apartment in this specific uh, location. <coughs> uh, and so once we have collected those reviews, uh, the first thing that's uh, probably like, are really, really uh, intuitive to make is just sentiment analysis. And for those of you who don't know what sentiment analysis is, basically uh, telling uh, if a certain review uh, is positive or negative. Um, however, we, I mean, sentiment analysis is cool, but it's not what we wanted. Uh, we wanted something more. We wanted uh, not based only on positive and negative overall, but we wanted like, uh, like. Uh, my colleague said, if I want a quiet place, I want to rank uh, the place by quietness, not by positiveness. If I want a place uh, where there's park, I want to, to be ranked by like where the, where's the park, uh, and so on and so on. Um, and yeah, and with this topic modeling, which I'm going to explain later, uh, we've made this categorical search, which is basically what I've explained. So uh, let's just uh, see the sentiment uh, results we've got. Like you can see in this uh, distribution plot, uh, those plots are all the data we have collected uh, from Airbnb. And those mean sentiments means that we are taking the mean of all the sentiments from all the reviews. Like I said, we have uh, like N reviews, many reviews for lo one location. We have many to one relationship there. Uh, and you can see like it's pretty medium, you, like zero is negative, it's total disaster. One is like very good. Sadly, we don't have uh, ones in Sofia. Uh, now the topic modeling. Uh, like I said, we've made use of different libraries to uh, really accelerate our work during those two days. Uh, and um, I'm gonna walk you through what, what is the process of topic modeling. Uh, so first we have uh, the corpus, like, and a corpus is basically uh, a bunch of sentences, a bunch of documents. You can see like we have doc1, doc2, doc3, doc4, and doc5. Those are all our documents, for example. Uh, and then we have our corpus are all of those documents. Uh, then we do cleaning of the documents, uh, which essentially means uh, we are making uh, all words lowercase. Uh, then we are removing uh, the punctuations, like uh, given punctuation, like the examination mark or the question mark. We do not remove them because they still uh, they still show something important about the sentence, right? I mean, if you have something like uh, this is very bad with two exclamation marks, this is essentially worse than this is very bad, just like that. So that is why we keep uh, some uh, uh, marks. Uh, so once we cleaned uh, those documents, uh, we, made a we make a dictionary, uh, which dictionary uh, essentially means uh, intuitively that uh, those are all the words we have used, the unique words we have used in our corpus. Uh, and after that, uh, we do uh, initiate the LDA model, which is the 10 Dirichlet uh, algorithm, allocation algorithm. Uh, and so once we do that, you can see right here we can specify the number of topics, and we can specify the number of words by which the topic is described. Uh, and those are essentially the results uh, we achieve here. Uh, and those numbers you see there, uh, like 0 0.099, essentially give us uh, like the importance of those tokens, the words. Uh, and once we have this LDA uh, uh, and topic modeling algorithm, uh, as I said, we do the categorical search. And uh, for this categorical, categorical search, uh, during the hackathon, uh, again, we made use of NLTK, uh, and especially uh, their post tagging uh, algorithm. And post means part of speech. Uh, we, like, you have a sentence. Uh, and if you give this sentence to the post-tagging algorithm, it will be able to say uh, what are the uh, parts of speech tags of the given tokens. Uh, 
Uh, you can see like in this example, we can say like from the reviews, the uh, 10th comment, uh, some comments right there, and uh, when we uh, essentially get those categorical tags, we do a several mapping from this part of speech that we have, you can imagine it like a pattern, and we traverse uh, this review and look for the patterns, the given patterns uh, we've spe specified, uh, making use of these post tags. Uh, and you can see like uh, you have our, it's said it's a pronoun, uh, stay noun, uh, like and, uh, the, and so on and so on. Like those different tags are essentially can be found in the NOTK documentation uh, and they represent uh, different parts of, part of speech tag. Uh, yeah, uh, and the categorical tags, for example, from this, uh, we have extracted like these categorical uh, tags. That was very enjoyable, that the room was clean and comfortable, and now probably if somebody search for cleanliness, it will give this uh, place with this review a higher rank. Uh, and yeah, like I said, uh, the categorical search, here exactly you can uh, find this pattern we are searching for. Uh, and uh, it basically, uh, we, like, w during the data analysis part, uh, we, we tried to uh, like think of what, par what post tags, what uh, words are interconnected that can give us a representation for uh, the different categories. So the other thing we used uh, to make the query work, uh, we wanted to be able to, uh, for the user to type a human readable sentence. For example, I want a room which is clean and uh, quiet or whatever. And uh, uh, we want to process this query and uh, use an algorithm to um, find uh, places which the reviews of are uh, relevant to this query. And what we did is uh, used uh, the so-called word embeddings, which um, are used to convert um, a word into essentially a vector, to embed them into a vector space, which can be 50 or 100 or 300 dimensional vector space, uh, which allows us to work on the meaning of words and apply this algorithm to the meaning of the words uh, instead of the characters or uh, the words with like regex or something. Uh, how we did that is uh, by using uh, GLOW, which is a model um, trained by Stanford on a huge collection of uh, text, which f finds the how words are used and uh, essentially finds their meaning and embeds them into this space. So for example, the word man and the word woman are uh, placed uh, in the same uh, relationship as like the word queen and king because they are similarly related. So we we can then use these vectors to work on the words. We can uh, for the hackton we just compared similarity, but uh, we can use for example a neural network and uh, an encoder to. Mm, find the meaning of the whole sentence and then uh, compare the meaning. But we just uh, use these vectors for the hackton. Mm. Yeah, so this is the web application uh, we've created. Uh, let's, like, okay, let's first walk you through the futures and then the interesting part, the search. Uh, like we have uh, this, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, basically we, we have some options like, uh, let's say, sports, and uh, this is like, uh, 
uh, the, da the data for the sports and uh, the population density is from the hackathon. So uh, basically, we just have the longitude and longitude of the of the place uh, and some weight. I in the in the sense of sports, the weight is only the the number of uh, sports <laughs> facilities in the given space. Uh, as you can see, you know w when it's a red, it means like that there there is more of the of the thing we're looking. So. Yeah, or, or like uh, if we look at the population density, for some reason, Druzhba is like more densely populated than some other places. And basically, those are just options for the, you, you can change the gradient and change the opacity, and that's basically it. Uh, now, here is the, the main part. Yeah, and actually, here you can write whatever text. Like, you can imagine, uh, you can basically imagine there is a, uh, your personal secretary behind uh, this application and it's getting your input and searching through the whole Airbnb and TripAdvisor uh, space and it gives you a result in sort of a heat map. What I'm trying to say is that you can input a natural language sentence. Uh, for example, um, let's say, um, I. Yeah, you can give us an And yeah, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> you can essentially like see, and uh, this again, as I said, uh, using this categorical search feature we've implemented that is uh, using topic modeling. Uh, it's searching uh, through the reviews from Airbnb, and yeah, you, you can you can take a screenshot if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, sure. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what he was trying to say is uh, that we, we have not, like, uh, yeah, I'm trying to say that, like, uh, we get the data for some Airbnbs, and this is the, this is the, uh, now when I select the Airbnb op option, you can see which quarters of the city we have data for in the Airbnb. So we don't have for the whole city. And uh, because, the, the, I mean, it, w when you search that, we, we have some uh, empty spaces. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah, and furthermore, uh, furthermore, yes, and we haven't analyzed exactly the whole because in order to improve uh, speed during the web application, uh, we are not doing the analysis uh, live. We are doing, an, we have done the analysis, and those are like are uploaded are just the results um, from the searches. Uh, like no, I think you could un understood this wrong. We we do a search by the word, but we do stuff like sentiment analyzing, analyzing and uh, other formatting of the text in order to be more useful for analysis. analysis beforehand we don't do it online uh, the benefits by doing it online is that we can stay always up to date with Airbnb reviews uh, however that would take uh, much more time uh, and what I wanted to say is that uh, we haven't done it from all the reviews which are ar around I, I believe they were around uh, 10,000 13,000 something like that I believe uh, we haven't done them Oh, because it will have taken us so much time. Like it's really computationally expensive to do it, uh, and like if we collect more reviews, it will get better uh, logically. Uh, so what what else term do you, did you say? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe if you give uh, rooms, maybe, and you have Airbnb profile. Yeah.
Yeah, essentially we can we can observe the pattern that we have much more data about the center of Sofia, uh, which which was logical and actually uh, looking at the data, more of the Air Air BNB uh, places are around Sofia. Like mostly you can rent an Airbnb places uh, in the center of Sofia. Uh, yeah, that's why you can see like more data around the center in Sofia. I guess it you get confused because, like, I don't believe somebody writing review for NBNB says I hate no pizza for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's... I'm joking so far. You can take your <laughs> technology. <laughs> Typing is hard. Okay. Yeah. But it didn't change yes. so much. Yes. So. Yeah, probably you can try dirt sheets or, or clean sheets and separate bathrooms. Okay. And, and yeah, both. Like, I want I want a place with separate bathrooms and clean sheets. It changed a little. Like it's highlighted this place more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's relative. Like it's not like so. 
there's my we didn't scale it at the hackathon because you know you, you can have more reviews here and when you have more reviews there it's going to be more red anyways whatever you search so that, that that's a downside but we didn't have the time you know to to scale it properly uh, more, a more right uh, method for doing that is probably doing it uh, relatively like uh, in percents of the reviews and not in 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 round numbers Because I mean, if you look at uh, the the most reviews we have here, and almost every time it's it's right, no matter what we're searching for, because of the of the sheer number of reviews there. Yeah, but uh, we're like in the last grade right now, and we have lots of stuff to do. So maybe in the yeah, yeah we have priorities. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh no, oh, you can, you can we deleted that. Uh, no, you can, we can, you can just show the link, the, the GitHub link where it's all the code, if somebody wants to. Okay, no, we. Uh, yeah, you can just. Yeah, if, yeah, if you could just. If somebody's interested in the code, like we have made uh, README where you, where basically there are steps for both Windows and Mac, you can run this thing and you can play with it. That's uh, probably you can find interesting stuff stuff and we are happy to share them with us. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I ain't gonna type because I'm slow. It's yours. Uh, to type the link, I'm not sure what, what ah. was the link. Oh no, uh, with, without uh, the first three. Uh, Some slee. Ah, it's too good. Okay. O R R A V hash. I'm going to do J slash life. Oh no. Yeah, it's just something. I'm not sure. Okay. Oh, it worked. Okay. Questions. Questions. Yeah. By the way, you can write uh, your desired topics for the next. Okay, I mean, I'm just gonna hold that now. I'm just gonna give you when. Oh, for the questions. Uh, okay, go get and answer the question. What is your first seat round? Um. What is seat round? This answers your question. This Ah, well, we, I don't know. <laughs> we don't, like we said, uh, we don't plan to make a startup with this right now, probably in the future, uh, and we'll see. So, uh, yeah. Um, like monthly updates because uh, computing in life will be very costly. Unless we upgrade the hardware, then we can try to do it live. But uh, we probably need to get the API keys from Airbnb because uh, there's a, there's a waiting queue and we we can't wait. So yeah, probably that. I, I don't know. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, also um, we can basically do something like uh, online learning and like basically online learning means the following: uh, you have some machine learning model or some model. Let's just say that and. Uh, those models have some coefficients, and online learning basically means you can give it new samples, and you can update those coefficients solely on this uh, sample. So probably we can uh, utilize this technique in our uh, application. Uh, however, I think uh, what my colleague said would be for the start a better thing to do. Yeah, we, 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 we received the data like uh, at the start of the hackathon, but uh, we were like uh, probably like at the, se at the first day at the second half, we had a 
a streamlined idea what we're going to do. So yeah, we received the data at the start and then started using it uh, a little bit later, like the second day. And we did uh, everything in the, in, the, in the hackathon, like we didn't do anything but beforehand because we didn't have the idea. We didn't have no yeah, <laughs> we decided on the spot. Uh, yeah, it was like three days. I, I don't remember. It was. Uh, it was maybe Friday evening, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah. Uh, well, no, sometimes. <laughs> you train your mom yourself, or you use trained models? Well, no, uh, we have used pre-trained only. Yeah. Yeah. There's just no time to to train also. Uh, mm, not sure exactly what that is. No, we have. Yeah, that basically, basically answers your question, yeah. Uh, no, uh, there's no functionality for saving a search or a few to later. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, this will be after the first seat, I guess. Yeah, that's probably after the first seat of learning. Uh, I mean, uh, if you like delete this, I'm, I'm pretty sure it remembers something because that's just a search box. Okay, it remembers Nike. Uh, no sponsors. Uh, I think that's just Google. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's just Well, at least for me, I mean, because of this question is like more personal for everybody, because, you know, it's a personal thing. Uh, for me, at least, it was like uh, to know, to start uh, working a little bit beforehand, because we started working a little bit too late. Uh, we could have done more things. Uh, and yeah, and having an idea like, what, what we were going to do before going to the competition. Or at least some wake part. Yeah, uh, for me probably it was the following methodology, like start small, then grow big, like start with basic models, then enhance them. Like uh, as we started, we started with sentiment, then we use, we go to uh, categorical. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say, I would say, don't, uh, don't rush into the uh, uh, fancy uh, new ideas in the first place. Like, build, build a pipeline, and be sure that your pipeline is proof to work. You can try it with some linear model, for example, a linear model that you're sure you can understand and you're sure what this linear model is doing. And after that, you have this whole pipeline of uh, uh, training, testing, and ev evaluation, for example. Uh, then uh, go go step further and like hyper-tune your parameters, uh, go with a bigger model, and so on. So yeah, uh, the basic thing for the hackathon was uh, that we have a clean idea and something that we are going to show that Either it will work or will not. It was, uh, I mean, it was worse than this then. Now we have uh, made it better. But uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Once again, thank you very much for the uh, attending of the presentation and for joining us uh, for the shared experience. And also thank uh, the teams who are shared, uh, who uh, have shared their outcomes of uh, the solutions. Uh, 
part of two datatons, two hackathons with data. And uh, all who registered for the event will uh, get the video uh, from, the, um, from the presentation, also the, the slides from the presentations. You can explore Tim Nishki's uh, code and solution, also GitHub, uh, yeah, the Git solution of uh, Tim Pepper. And once again, I want to remind you that you can join, still join the World Congress in Berlin, which is happening in June, uh, in, star in the start of, uh, at the beginning of June, uh, by using uh, this uh, code. And what I want to share with you as well is uh, our event page. Uh, there you can follow what we are doing, what we are planning to do. You see that there are nerd of co coding sessions coming up next uh, Wednesday and afterwards and afterwards. Um, also now is happening um, and uh, the text mining data science monthly challenge is ongoing. You can still join, although it's the last week of the challenge, but uh, there are some video and code uh, instructions uh, for those of you who are uh, interested in text um, text mining and NLP. Uh, one of our mentors uh, have prepared um, video instructions. She shared uh, her code. So if you want to learn, this is your opportunity um, to do that uh, with, a, with an existing case, of course. And yeah. ML by students, uh, we are attending this right now. So, and the next thing is the data science kits. Something that we are planning to do in the future, really near future. Actually, probably we are um, going to announce this uh, next month. So keep an eye on this page, which is the page. <laughs> huh? You can see it right there. Is uh, our special special interest groups where um, people who are interested generally in data science can focus on certain domains like robotics, uh, data science uh, in the industry of robotics, or data science in the industry of finance, or um, data engineering. More specifically, there will be. Uh, interesting events, part of these uh, special interest groups, workshops, meetups, so keep an eye on this. Uh, open your emails because we are uh, spamming you. Uh, and um, yeah, that's all. If you have any questions for me or for the Data Science Society team, <laughs> this is the time. No slido this time. Okay. <laughs> so outside there is beer and water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can take a VR network and thank you once again for coming.